Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Good music gear is expensive, but sometimes good music gear is cheap and I don't really know how that works. For proper financial advice, consult your doctor. In today's video, I wanna talk about a handful of items that are under $100, some of them are under $50, some of them are under $20, that surprised me with how affordable they are while still sounding really good or making a big difference to my workflow. Uh, a lot of these items have been in my setup for years, a lot of them I use all the time, so let's get into it. Just a note that I'm using US dollars because the largest portion of my audience is from America. <laughs> First up, a desk mounted mic arm. I've seen these on Amazon for $17. $14, $12. These are game changing for a home studio because they just attach to your desk so they take up less space than a normal mic stand where you know you got the legs on the floor. They'll also save you a bit of time because they're more easily adjustable than a normal mic stand. Um, not only like the angle, but also whether you're sitting or standing. You just put the mic where you want it to go and it stays there. Yeah! Second item on the list is a headstock tuner for tuning your headstocks, tuning your guitar, but it just clips onto your headstock and then um, you play a note, it tells you if the note's in tune. As you can see, this works on an electric guitar without it even being plugged in. And I think it's a great thing to just leave on your instrument and always have a tuner there. You don't have to plug into your tuning pedal or a tuning plugin in your DAW or use a tuning app on your phone. You don't have to tune to another instrument. You just have this ready to go at all times. Uh, the one I have is $15. I can't recommend it enough. Moving on, wall mount guitar hangers. I've seen one as low as $7 on Amazon. These are another thing that'll save you space instead of keeping your instrument on a stand on the floor. Mount it to the wall, it's almost flat up against the wall and uh, in my opinion, it looks just as good as, if not better than art. When you have it out and accessible, it's just so much easier in your workflow. You'll pick it up to practice it more. Wall hangers. Just breaking into the 20 to $50 category is this circuit breaker cable, which is, uh, you know, just a standard patch cable. Use it how you would use a patch cable, but it's got this really special thing on one end that lets you stop passing signal through. So you can just click that and then be free to unplug your stuff without that annoying popping sound that everybody hates and which also, you know, at loud enough volumes can damage speakers. Especially if you're gigging, this is great because it's one less thing that you have to bug the sound tech for. The amount of times I've yelled across a venue like, can you just uh, mute my channel just for a second? I just gotta unplug real quick. I got my pedals in the wrong order and uh, I just love wasting all of your time. All right, this next one is music adjacent, but stick with me, soldering iron. Firstly, can somebody explain to me about the soldering iron industry? Because how come this one costs $3 and this one costs 900? The one I use costs $43 and I'm pretty sure I bought the cheapest one that had a temperature readout. I think that was my thought process with that. Also, yeah, usually I say solder instead of solder because there's a L in it. Having a soldering iron is really helpful because it makes synth modules way cheaper. Bwah, 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 bwah. Modules are so much more affordable if you're willing to buy DIY kits and solder them yourself. I've jumped us up into the $50 to $100 category. Uh, some DIY kits are still more than $100. Some are less than 50, but uh, there's a lot of great stuff in that $50 to $100 range. This graphic EQ I built was about 60 bucks. You can actually get a filter for 35 pounds. You can get a delay for 35 pounds. I just switched to pounds real quick because I'm looking at Pusher Man. Shout out to Pusher Man. Got a lot of good stuff from them before. Next up, I've played around with a lot of different different MIDI controllers, and in my opinion, the best one under $100 is the Alesis V25. I've reviewed this on my channel before. Uh, it's got full-size keys. They feel really great. The build quality is super sturdy. It's also got eight drum pads, pitch and mod wheel, four assignable knobs. You can get one of these for about $80. Coming in at $99, the Shure SM58 LC. This is just a legendary microphone. Everybody's used it. It sounds great for the price and all of Shure's stuff goes through military grade testing, like drops and temperature changes and all that. So this is kind of funny. You have to get the SM58 LC, not the SM58, because the LC stands for lower quality. No, the LC stands for less cable, actually. So you're buying the exact same microphone, but it doesn't come with a cable and that that one's $99. Okay, shoot. When I bought this next item, it was $52, and now it's 98. 
the economy. I really wanted to recommend a $50 guitar pedal. Uh, I mean, there's tons of guitar pedals that are under $100. There's even some under 50 that sound great. I wanted to feature this one though because it's a Boss pedal and Boss has just made so many iconic pedals. I've owned so many of them throughout the years. I love their form factor and their construction. I obviously love how they sound. I love how they look. Anyway, this is still just under $100 and uh, you can get lots of other pedals for much less money than that even. I'm actually thinking now, why don't we use a bunch of this gear and make some music? If you haven't seen my last couple of videos, I've been hanging out with Horace, who is an alien from another dimension where they don't have music. So obviously I had to show him all of the classics, and today we're going to create an original song together. You ready, buddy? I will give it my utmost. All right, so what's been your favorite style of music that I've shown you so far? Hmm. I'm an alien from another dimension Cave full of crystals under my protection That is on the planet, check the rocks I mentioned Andrew Wong with the honorable mention I travel through space for science Trying to track down these mysterious diamonds Turns out one was alive and kind of giant We high-fived and quickly formed an alliance Also, just in case you haven't had the briefing Human time compared to mine is quite fleeting My mind races on the speed of light competing My name is... Greetings. I couldn't pronounce that, so I called him Horace On a barren planet, but enjoying the auroras Only eating space food, feeling malnourished Everybody back on Earth, join the chorus We've been exploring a whole new galaxy Mission was so low, now I've got a pal with me Friendship so far and wide, cause baby can't you see I got you, you got me, we got we us The crystals bind together the very fabric of space and time and serve as a bridge between worlds. They are our most precious resource. Long ago, my home world came under attack. And to ensure their safety, guardians like me were dispatched across many galaxies to hide them. Cool. Where are we going right now? This way, to send a transmission. Ooh, is this the light beam thing? Yes, the light beam thing. Who are you communicating with anyway? An old friend, another guardian, but I haven't heard from him in a long time. We once protected the crystals together on a different planet, but for greater safety it was decided that I would come here with half of them while he remained there. In fact, it is the same planet from which you came. You were on Earth. Correct. Horus, I don't know how to tell you this, but your friend is definitely not guarding the crystals anymore. Why do you say this? Because I found them. I had them. You had them? And where are they now? I use them. For time travel. I don't know if that's what they're for, but that's what they let me do. You used them? I did. And they're the reason I came to this planet. I came to find more. I'm sorry, Horace. I didn't know how important they are. They're incredibly important. I and every guardian across the universe have sworn to lay down our lives to protect these crystals. Horace, I'm sorry. Horace. We didn't send the message yet. There will be no one to hear it. Andrew, the crystals have been located. Why have you not procured them? Brick, I don't know if this is a difference between humans and robots, but I'm not just gonna take something 
that belongs to somebody else. Humans don't do that. Humans have done that for much of their history. Example, 1492. Okay, okay, okay. Some of us maybe, but I didn't sign up for some colonial jaunt across the universe. You are contractually obligated to fulfill your role in the mission. Yeah, well, I think the mission was a little bit different when we didn't know that the crystals belonged to an alien. May I suggest a compromise? We can run the most important tests in the ship laboratory without removing the crystals from the planet. Okay, I guess we could do that, but if Horace says no, I'm not going to, okay? Very well, Andrew. Oh, why am I still recording?